just me. A place to be me, where you get to experience life. Because life is a journey, not a guided tour. If you want the rainbow, you have to go through the rain. Hello, hello, hello. This is Anthony and Yolanda Blendman with Blendman Wellness, our health and wellness nutrition business. We are glad to be talking with you guys again. So what is generational wealth and what does it mean to you? So what is generational wealth to me? Generational wealth to me is just having that legacy and knowing that my children and my children's children is going to benefit from the revenue and the ongoing um, income and wealth that we've created. So knowing that they're going to be taken care of, knowing that it's going to be consistent because either we've invested it well or we just have that ongoing revenue that just continues even after we're no longer here. So that's what generational wealth really means to me. To me, generational wealth is to have that comfort zone to where our families are able to have breathing room and have that finances to where they don't have to work as hard as this generation before them. So it should be a progression between generations. I feel that generational wealth has became a phenomenon because generations want the next generation to be well off and well being. And that helps with the mental state at that point, because once you know that your generations are financially well off, you're able to relax and rest easier. And I agree with that statement. Less stress, more blessed. Which is a bo- employee boss relationship where you're trading hours for dollars. And it's also a traditional business. Now, the benefits of active income is you get immediate money for hours that you have. But once you don't clock those hours, your income stops and dim- or diminishes greatly. So you have explained what active income is. But what I have also heard people talk about is passive income. So what's passive income? What we're trying to phase to is more of a passive income, which is investments, business systems, Things that are going to allow your money to make money and you don't have to physically be in a brick and mortar area in order to do it. An example of passive income for me is more like a franchise based. Based entity to where you're compounding and multiplying your money making potential. Passive income is important because of duplication. You can be in multiple places at multiple times, making multiple income streams, which is very beneficial as opposed to being in one spot and having to be in that one spot in order to make money. Also, it just gives you options. So you may have your job just like, you know, and we hear it every day, where um, we have coworkers or families or friends who are having to um, work more than one job, but yet they're still stressed. They're still not knowing how they're going to make ends meet because even though they're working more than one job, it's still taking a lot from them, from their health, from their mental state. But when you have like some residual income that's coming in or another form of multiple stream of income coming in, then you're really not stressing as much, or at least um, we haven't stressed as much because, you know, we know that 
um, what we are providing to people is blessing them. They're loving it. It's something they're wanting to um, get. And we know that it's, it's blessing them, but in return, it's going to bless us. And we don't have to think about, um, you know, really just think hard about it or say, oh my goodness, I got to wake up and do another 15 hours on top of the 40 hours that I just did. Is that more than 24 hours? That's probably more than 24 hours. But anyway. <laughs> and a key example for me was when I was in education and I used to work the 10 month scale. Um, we were really making a mad dash to figure out how we were going to tie the loose ends up as far as the two months I wasn't working in class. Um, but with a passive income that actually kind of connected the dots for us and it was able to compound even when I was working those 10 months. So it was in addition to it without me physically having to be in two different places, if that makes sense. Yes, that definitely makes sense. In your opinion, what is positive money mindset? A positive money mindset is very influential for being able to get a foothold on your finances. And the first thing we need to realize is understanding what is and isn't a financial emergency and actually how to cover costs that we may have and may arise. So there are options for covering costs of financial emergencies, but you want to get away from these five options. High interest borrowing, borrowing from friends and family, pawning items, overdrawing from accounts, and retirement savings. Although they may take away from the burden, the debt burden immediately, long term, it's not beneficial for you because you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. And for me, um, where it comes in improving money, like within the community or just the just education, it again goes back to education, doing our part to let people who are close to us know, hey, there's a better way um, to manage your money. Because, again, it's about managing your money and being good stewards over our money as God has, you know, asked us to do. And so just having that education to change the mindset to help bring stability to your mental health, that's where I feel, again, that that can help within our community. And in order to shape this in a positive way, as far as what we do with our money, we have to understand first how we mentally think about our money and what will we identify it as. We have started to identify our money not as something that is a commodity that we can just spend freely on everything and then it re automatically replenishes to something that is used as a tool. We should be able to save our money and go through different avenues to allocate our money to different different things, but also understand that it should be invested to where it compounds and money starts making money for you. What's the impact of financial stability on a person's mental health, mental wellness? The impact of financial stability on mental health. Wow. Anthony, I will let you handle that question. In studying the relationship between financial worries and psychological distress, I came across a study that was done by Suman Ryu and Lu Fan that examined the association between financial worries and psychological distress in U.S. adults. This was a cross-sectional 2018 survey or, or study that was, that was done. So, Basically, what it stated was that 37% of adults reported an inability to cope with short-term liquidity needs. So basically, as their debt rose, their worry and their stress rose. And 11% of U.S. adults said their households sometimes 
or often did not have enough to eat in the last seven days, which to me was really alarming. So basically, the it is directly related money to stressors. And that's an alarming trend. Well, for me, um, I explored myself and studied myself and what God said in the Bible. I basically just went more biblical on things and started reading God's words, what he talked about with finances and um, the obedience of tithing and um, just knowing that even no matter what we're going through, the stressors, um, how it can make us feel depressed or overwhelmed, that God has our back and that he's going to provide. And like He's our source. He's our main provider. So that's, you know, I just started taking those concepts and yeah, I looked at some of Dave Ramsey and Susan, Susie Orman, or however you pronounce her name. I looked at some of their techniques and books and everything. And I think that's where I came up with the envelope system um, that we currently use just so that, you know, we wouldn't even have to touch what we have in the bank because we, you know, put that aside in envelopes. But yeah, I just stuck basically biblical and just knew what God said was true. And that's what I hold on to. Thank you guys so, so much for offering your knowledge around this topic. The financial recommendations offered by Blemens Wellness may not be applicable for all listeners. If you have any doubts as to the merits of future financial recommendations, you should schedule a private consultation or seek advice from an independent financial advisor. The information offered on this episode is for educational purposes only. Thank you so much for listening to Just Me Therapy podcast. If you are seeking further one-on-one -on -one diagnoses, interventions, and treatment plans, please consider scheduling an appointment with an individual counselor at Journeys Counseling Center located in Greensboro, North Carolina. Journeys can be reached at 336-294-1349. The mission of Just Me Therapy podcast is to use authentic conversations to uplift one's mind, body, and soul. The goal of Just Me Therapy is to offer affordable education and insight to individuals who experience financial barriers to accessing individualized behavioral health care services. With that being said, the information, including opinions, advice, and recommendations discussed in this podcast are intended for individual, informational, and educational purposes only. Such information is not intended to substitute the recommendations of your own licensed therapist or healthcare professional. Although we are licensed behavioral health professionals, we are not your licensed behavioral health professional. As a result, the advice mentioned on this podcast should not replace the recommendations offered by your own qualified health professional.